Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Monty Python. Hello again and welcome back. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. In chapter 67 of Don Quixote Part 2, our hero has ridden ahead and waits for Sancho in the shade of a tree. He's depressed about his defeat and worried about disenchanting Dulcinea. Cervantes' description of how these melancholic thoughts plague the Hidalgo is funny and grotesque. Like flies on honey, thoughts came at him and stung him. Sancho arrives and praises the liberal nature of Tosilos, which causes Don Quixote to affirm again that Tosilos could not have been the Duke's true lackey. Like Sancho's visions of the peasant woman as Dulcinea and Carrasco as the Knight of the Mirrors, Don Quixote says the squire has been deceived again by evil enchanters who want to rob him of his glory. But instead of dwelling on Dulcinea, Don Quixote abruptly turns to Altisidora, asking Sancho if Tosilos has reported whether or not she still loves him. Whether she has bemoaned my absence or surrendered to the hands of oblivion those enamored thoughts that beset her in my presence. Sancho is shocked by Don Quixote's curiosity regarding the thoughts of Altisidora instead of Dulcinea, but Don Quixote responds that although he might be unenamored, he is not ungrateful of Altisidora. There's some sort of substitution going on here near the end of the novel. Altisidora and Dulcinea are become interchangeable. It does not take Don Quixote long to return the discussion of Altisidora back to the matter of Dulcinea's disenchantment. He's angry at Sancho's avoidance of his pledge. Dulcinea, whom you offend by the retardation of your lashes and the punishment of your flesh, which I would see eaten by wolves and which sooner wants to save itself for worms than provide for the remedy of that poor woman. He also links Sancho's debt to Dulcinea to the squire's status as his feudal servant. May the heavens grant you the grace to come to your senses and realize the obligation you are under to help my lady, who is yours as well, because you are mine. Again, Sancho's labor is the issue. Is he Don Quixote's slave or are his lashes voluntary? Did you know dux is the Latin term for leader? which refers to anyone who commanded troops but was not of a formal military rank. Later, it would become the noble title of Duke. This discussion ends when our heroes arrive at the same spot and place where they had been trampled by the bulls. Instead of melancholy, however, the bulls remind Don Quixote of the gorgeous shepherdesses and the gallant shepherds who, before the encounter with the bulls, had received them into their pretend Arcadia. Arcadia gives Don Quixote new hope. Now he plans to fulfill his promise to the Knight of the White Moon by imitating pastoral novels instead of chivalric novels. I would like, O oh Sancho, for us to become shepherds. Amazing here is how rapidly Cervantes produces a concise parody of the pastoral genre along the same lines of what he has been doing all along with the chivalric genre. Quixotic Mission According to Don Quixote, why does Dulcinea have to be Sancho's lady? A. Dulcinea is Don Quixote's lady B. Dulcinea is beautiful C. Dulcinea takes care of the environment Correct answer A. Dulcinea is Don Quixote's lady First, Don Quixote comes up with new names for himself and his sidekick, the shepherd Quixotith and the shepherd Panthino. He then reviews the Golden Age theme from chapter 11 of part one. We will be given sweetest fruit by the magnanimous hands of the oaks, seats by the trunks of the hardened cork trees, shadows by the willows, aromas by the roses, carpets of a thousand shaded colors by the wide meadows, etc. Sancho, of course, is enthralled. He says their friends Sanson Carrasco, Nicolás the Barber, and even the priest will want to join them in their new lifestyle. Hilarious names follow accordingly. The shepherd Sansonino, Miculoso, and the shepherd Curiambro. 
Of course, they will all have lovers about whom to complain and lots of music emanating from traditional pastoral instruments. Flutes, Zamoran bagpipes, tambourines, handbells, rebecks. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating text. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.